Hello everyone and welcome to a complete run through of the Blue Origin Lunar Lander plan using this, the Blue Moon Mark II Lander. This model is from EsaQuest. I made the realism overhaul configurations for it, so setting the mass of everything. And I explained that in a previous video. I'll try to make sure to link that in the video description. Uh, but it is a hydrogen oxygen fuel lander. The cabin is at the bottom and it weighs in at about 60 tons. Uh, and it fits on a New Glenn rocket. The New Glenn can't lift it to orbit fully fueled, but it can ensure that it has enough fuel to transfer to the moon on its own without any crew, and then capture around the moon to wait for the eventual crew to come over on Orion. And then it needs to be fully fueled. Uh, so here I am underfueling it to 60%. Uh, so that it can launch on a New Glenn rocket. So I'm uh, preparing that, but then we need to prepare the refuelers as well, which will also launch on this New Glenn rocket by Blue Origin. And then Orion will launch on Space Launch System. Uh, initially, I put it on Block 1, but then put it on Block 1B in order to have Orion bring over so a little bit of extra fuel. This is the refueler. I decide to just use the tanks from the lander uh, in reality, they're going to have Lockheed make a special tanker to transfer the fuel, and that will be more efficient. I expect that it'll take three refuelers to top it off around the moon, and in my case, it took a little bit more than three, which is why I ultimately have Orion bring over some extra fuel. And here I'm putting Orion on the space launch system, so Orion will bring the crew over and also bring them back, uh, but the lander, of course, goes to the surface of the moon, Orion stays in orbit. Here I am launching out of Cape Canaveral, and uh, unfortunately the pad is not exactly the way that New Glenn's pad would be. We do have some nice clouds here, courtesy of volumetric clouds by Blackrack as well as RSS Reborn. And so here the rocket is hoisting our payload up. I will reserve the fuel for the recovery of the first stage, this New Glenn rocket by Blue Origin does have a recoverable first stage that lands on a drone ship. And so I reserved 20 seconds, a little bit more than 20 seconds of fuel there uh, for its recovery. And that should be more than enough uh, to have it do a breaking burn and then land. It might not need as much of a breaking burn because of the wing pieces that they have. But I don't simulate that part in this uh, because it took long enough already. Uh, anyway, uh, the fairings going off uh, were awkward because the lander is such a tight fit that it sort of clipped into the colliders there. Normally the fairings don't go, go off like that. So I dumped the second stage so at the orbits and then complete orbit with this stage. It's possible that they could bring the second stage all the way to orbit and have it deorbit itself either way. Uh, but in this case I decided to just use the lander to finish orbit. And then here we have a very long burn over to the moon. I thought about doing this run through, but I hadn't really considered it a very high priority thing because I had already demonstrated in previous videos that Delta V wise it could all be done. I've, I demonstrated all the bits of it and decided that it wasn't really the most pressing thing, but then somebody whose name I can't quite pronounce because it's very, very, very long. It seems like Matt, 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 it repeats a lot, uh, asked if I could do this. So I decided to go ahead and do it after all. But to make it more interesting, I've made sure to put it into a polar orbit. As you can see here, we're approaching on a polar trajectory. That's going to be sort of like where they put Lunar Gateway, even though Lunar Gateway is in no way involved in what I'm going to be doing here. Uh, Lunar Gateway could be used as a rendezvous point for everything to meet up with each other. But And Lunar Gateway is the station around the moon that has been proposed by NASA. But we don't need that. We don't require that in this case necessarily. Uh, so it's going to be captured into that, which is my best simulation of a near rectilinear halo orbit, which Lunar Gateway would be in. Uh, Delta V wise, it'll be about the same going to and from that from the surface. So it's good enough. So this is the launch of a refueler. We need to do three refuelers. And so this is the first one. Even though there was many weeks of gap between that previous mission and this one, we still had the cloud over. I don't know why. Uh, there was no reversion or anything, but the cloud just... Uh, it's probably a different cloud that came over and gave us a bit of an overcast. Same fairing situation. And we proceed. I've thought about making my own version of the tanks. Uh, 
Again, if we just use procedural parts for the tanks, we'd get a much lighter transfer stage. In all cases, in all bits of this, I've been very conservative. The tanks are heavier than probably they will have uh, for this particular piece for the refueler because Lockheed will make a nicer one that doesn't, uh, it doesn't need as much insulation and stuff like that uh, because it's not landing on the surface and waiting for a month. Uh, but also, the lander cabin is fairly heavy, coming in at more than 8 tons, and I've even put some lead weight to counterbalance the docking port on the side of the lander cabin, so there's an extra 0.4 tons or so to make sure it's uh, properly balanced with a docking port on one side. You'll see that docking port in a bit. Now, because I put things into the high orbit to simulate the lunar gateway orbit, and also it's sort of necessary because Orion can't get into the low orbit and in return, uh, it creates a sort of situation for our rendezvous. And if we timed it right, yeah, as long as you launch all the mission pieces one month apart, they will all line up properly. But I'm not doing them one month apart. Instead of doing it one month apart or one lunar orbit apart, uh, I am doing it a little bit off uh, in order to create a bad scenario requiring a little bit more delta V in order to make sure that we simulate the situation where they don't get to launch exactly when they want to and have to delay because of weather or whatever. Uh, so, yeah, after all, we do want to get the mission completed. Uh, boil off is not actually much of a problem with as much insulation as there is on the lander. So it seems like that's fairly well controlled. Uh, but, yeah, I'm taking a lot more Delta V to rendezvous with it and so delivering less propellant. And I'm sure NASA would be able to do this a lot better. And, but still, it would probably take three trips. Or NASA plus Blue Origin. Alright, so here we are docking. And ultimately, I decided to transfer all the fuel from the, lander in, uh, from the refueler into the lander. Uh, though I tried to reserve some for deorbiting the refueler, uh, I couldn't get a small enough amount left over. Uh, I should have probably used chip manifest for that. That would probably have worked out better. Uh, but I just transferred all of it and left the refueler in orbit this time. But on the subsequent refuelers, the next two, I'm going to have a little bit of reserve fuel in the bottom bit that actually holds the engines. And that will be locked and reserved for deorbiting it. So this is now the second refueler, and all this was done during Twitch live streams, and there were some glitches and issues along the way that I've omitted that were just a matter of the mods, especially my new Glen Rocket having colliders on the first stage that clipped a little bit into the second stage causing problems. That took a while. There were other issues as well, especially with the trajectory, and uh, in this case, I have fully fueled the tanks on the refueler. Since we're using the same tanks as the lander, uh, remember the lander had to be underfueled for New Glenn to carry it. This has to be underfueled as well, even though we're not carrying the cabin. It's underfueled to 90%. The lander itself had to be underfueled to 60% for New Glenn to bring it up. But in this case, I topped it off instead of 90% uh, going to 100%. Uh, and decide that it'd be all right leaving the second stage short of orbit by 400 meters per second and just having the lander complete orbit. Uh, whether that was actually more efficient than having the lander underfueled is a good question. It didn't, didn't seem to make much of a difference, frankly. Uh, so we're not ending up delivering more fuel like this. Uh, the key way to make sure to deliver more fuel is just to time them right, but I'm deliberately not timing it right, and we're always going to end up askew to our target. And so we're doing that again. Uh, previous, on the previous one, the first refueler, it took about 900 meters per second to rendezvous, which is really bad. This time I did a little bit of a better job. So that will mean that we deliver a little bit more, hopefully. But yeah, it's a weird situation as we capture here because we have a severe inclination difference but also a phase difference. But the capture is light because we want to keep our apoapsis high to make sure that we can change the orbit at that apoapsis. And basically we're going to try and meet up with the target at its apoapsis. So at our apoapsis, the refueler apoapsis, we boost up to this really high orbit uh, that also crosses the orbit of the target. 
and you can sort of see it there. Overall, this costs less than what I did with the first refueler, which was try and intercept the lander directly on getting into Lunar SOI. And all these burns are really high up over the moon, and therefore also really high up over the Earth, and so we get a view of both Earth and the moon. The refuelers also have the 3B7 engines. I set them apart like that, not because that's how they do it. That's actually because it just fit the mount on the New Glenn a little bit better. So I had it like that. Uh, it's not illegal to have it like this, but it's generally better to put the engines closer together and then tilt them a little bit just in case one fails. Then it won't throw the whole thing off quite a lot. Uh, but... I didn't do that because I knew the engines wouldn't fail. I don't have test flight in here, so I don't have anything that would make the engines fail, so it was all right to put it like this for aesthetic reasons. All right, so transferring the fuel over, but this time I do have the locked tank at the bottom to help with the deorbiting, so this will not remain space junk. And so, yep, unlock, just a little bit of fuel there. You can sort of see the dry mass of the refueler. It's over six tons, which considering that it's fully fueled mass is 50 tons. Uh, it's more than 10%, and so it's a fairly heavy stage. I think it's a reasonable mass for the refuelers. And here's the third refueler. Well, that's the thing with uh, running through this mission and why I wasn't like eager to jump on it. It's a whole bunch of refueling mainly. Uh, and. I, I dread trying to do the Starship mission even more, of course, but, yeah, well, yeah, three I can do. I don't want to do, like, ten or however many the Starship one is. Uh, yeah, this was already tedious enough. All right, well, at least it was a clear day, so we didn't have the big clouds overhead this time. We had a nice sunny launch. I still fully fueled the refueler. And it completed orbit. No problems. And then the standard sort of transfer, 3142-ish. Stuff to send fuel to the moon. Of course, we would hope that we could refuel the landers at the moon get some of that water electrolyzed and turn it into hydrogen and oxygen so that I can refuel the lander. And that's why it's good to have a lander that uses hydrogen and oxygen and is a single reusable stage. However, in this case, the BE-7 engines only have 10 ignitions. That's my fault. I said it like that. And we actually use all 10 ignitions on the lander at the end. So yeah, probably they'll need more ignitions if they got to be reused and or they could just replace the engines but presumably they're going to have more than 10 ignitions but we haven't seen any hydrolox engines that were used in space that have more than 10 ignitions so uh, uh, we would need something that says that they have these number of ignitions so far we haven't gotten that from blue origin yet as far as i know so if it's gonna be the first hydrogen oxygen engine capable of this uh, we need to be told. Anyway, doing all the maneuvers to rendezvous, same strategy, meeting up with the target high up, uh, boosting our orbit to that because I once again didn't time it for where it would match up properly. With Orion, we have to time it where we match up properly. Orion just doesn't have all the fuel margin that all these refuelers have because the refuelers are just floating fuel tanks, but Orion's service module is very limited, so we really have to hit it right in order to do the rendezvous if we want to get back efficiently. Now, well, I mean, and we don't. it's not that tight if you're like NASA and you're gonna wait a while, uh, but I'm impatient. So being impatient, it's not so great to have the timing wrong. All right, so the refueler is deorbited and finally it is time for Ryan. There's the refueling tank, the spare fuel that I've been talking about, about six tons worth of spare fuel. And because of that, we need to send it on block 1B, which is 
the bigger version of NASA's Space Launch System. I've demonstrated in many videos other ways to launch Orion. Uh, some ways people propose are just wrong. No, it's not going to be sufficient to take Orion with the ICPS and put it on Falcon Heavy. That's not going to do it. We don't have enough Delta V to get to the moon with a full Orion service module like that. But there are other ways if you really want to push it. This, however, has the benefit of being the current plan. So, I mean, if I'm going to say, well, this is the Blue Origin plan for landing on the moon, well, it includes SLS in this case. That may change, I don't know. All right, so that's the end of the core. And then, of course, the EUS, the second stage, completes orbit. We do have RL-10C whatever's here. The appropriate one for SLS, don't worry. And then we transfer it over to the moon. Hoping that my timing is not too bad. All right, there it goes. The SLS mod I'm using here is by Sobol, S-O-B-O-L, and it's just called Space Launch System. And so it includes the Orion and the SLS. Uh, but it does have some problems, uh, well, or I'm using things the wrong way, and one of them was the decoupling. I didn't really expect it to decouple like that. Uh, I, I tried to do one thing at a time, but the those fairings still exploded, so that's not great. And uh, that decoupling I thought would be the top decoupling, the one with the mount holding the Orion, but it turned out to be the bottom one, which was not what I was expecting. Uh, so we have a little bit of a problem here trying to get that tank because it's not controlled and it's sort of floating and rotating. Uh, the EUS actually, I didn't, my mistake, I didn't put our extra RCS on it. So it really wouldn't have he held things steady necessarily though because it's big. It'd probably be steadier than just the floating tank. I didn't put any controller on the tank or any RCS. It's just a tank with docking ports on it. And so I had to sort of do a rendezvous with it, trying to make sure we catch it at the right time as it's rotating slowly. I mean, it's not the worst rotation ever, but still, it's an annoying rotation, that's for sure. So here, trying to convince it to meet up with my port. Now, having Orion bring this over when I am not timing this the most perfect way possible is a little bit tricky. So, we are going to face Delta V issues, especially coming back. So, I was already nervous about our return journey and how much Delta V it would take. I mean, we're going to be getting into a fairly high orbit around the moon. The problem is whether we can wait long enough for the high point in our orbit, the apoapsis, to be pointed in the right direction to help with the transfer back. And the answer is no. <laughs> we don't have the time to wait for that because I don't have enough supplies. If we had Lunar Gateway around the moon, then I'd have enough supplies. But right now, I'm not carrying enough supplies to have the Kerbals hang out around the moon long enough for our orbit to get into the right place. Besides, it's not really, really going to be in the right place. As it's complicated. So I'm going to have to do a fancy maneuver on the way back to make it all work out. But anyway, for now, we just need to meet up and at least our periapsis meets up with the periapsis of the target. We are about 20 degrees off, so I correct the inclination here higher up over the moon, of course, not low down. And then after the inclination is corrected, it's fairly easy to rendezvous with the target. And here we're just matching speeds. So it doesn't cost as much with this as it did with the refuelers because of the timing being a little bit better, but we could have made the timing even more favorable and reduced the Delta V cost. Now I'm docking on the top docking port here and that's to transfer the fuel, but there's also a side docking port on the crew cabin on the lander and that's where I'll dock Orion to afterwards to transfer the crew in. And it's that docking port on the side of the crew cabin that needed a counterbalance on the opposite side. So I've transferred the hydrogen and oxygen to top off the propellant in the lander. Again, that's the little bit that was due to my own inefficiencies that hopefully uh, the pros will do a little bit better. And then here I'm docking on the side of the crew cabin to get the crew in. 
not really thrilled with this whole docking on the side of the crew cabin thing. It's got to be hard for the RCS on this business to really dock to like Lunar Gateway on that docking port, assuming that that's what they want to do. But anyway, it's easier for something else to dock with it at that docking port, but not for the lander itself to try and maneuver to dock onto something else at that point. Anyway, that is the view of Orion and the Blue Origin lander above the moon. Thought I'd get that shot. And then it's time for the landing. So first, from the high orbit, we have to get to a low orbit. So that's that burn right there. And that gets us into a nice tight orbit around the moon so that I can aim for the south pole. While I've placed a little marker for where I want to land at the south pole, uh, it's not really where we're going to land. Uh, so, I mean, I wasn't wedded to it anyway. It was just a reference point. It turns out that I start this burn way too late to land at that particular location. It is a long burn with this lander. And in fact, it was so long that I risked crashing into the surface and had to tilt up a lot. We've got way too much horizontal speed and we are really close to the surface. So here I pitch up, trying to kill that vertical speed at the last moment. The lander does have plenty of margin for this. Well, not for this. It's actually for bringing down payload or something uh, along with the crew. Uh, we've got the crew cabin, we've got the supplies, we've the, and we've got the crew, but we're not really accounting for other stuff that they might carry along with them. And so because of that, we have a little bit more margin than the real mission would have. So that basically saves me. Uh, otherwise, you know, where we're rendezvousing with the Delta V to get from the tight orbit back up to Orion is not very much different from what it'd take to get up to Lunar Gateway. So we're doing a reasonable job as far as simulating the things are concerned. And here I am setting down. Okay, so we have reached the surface and it's time for Jeb to plant a flag. And Jeb is very small compared to the size of the lander because it's like more human sized. And so the South Pole, it works. And it was Jeb, Bill and Bob landing and Val is doing the Michael Collins thing and hanging out with the Orion. Okay, and I, I forgot the ladder, but uh, th that little, uh, there's a little tank above the door. That's the lead weight that's counterbalancing the docking port. So. As long as the ladder isn't more than 200 kilograms, which is the mass of that lead weight, it'll be fine. <laughs> so we could just remove the lead weight and put the 200 kilogram ladder and it'll be all balanced. But here we are getting back into orbit around the moon, lining up with the Orion again, making sure that our relative inclination is not too far off. It's a very leisurely burn to orbit. And here we make it. All right, so now it's just a matter of rendezvous, which means boosting back up to the Orion orbit, though we won't meet up with it high up. We'll meet up with it uh, at the bottom near periapsis, but boosting up allows us to get the timing right. So it's about a 642 meter per second burn here. That's of course the same as it took to get from the high orbit down. And then here's the rendezvous. The speed difference wasn't too much at all. I think there were some minor RCS burns along the way. And docking. The lander is very big compared to Orion. But a lot of that is fuel tank. But even the crew cabin is fairly large. Well, well, you would expect that because they're staying in it while on the surface, assuming there's no other base at that point. I transferred, there was a little bit of balancing of food, water, and oxygen between the two along the way. I wanted to make sure that we had the right amounts. But it is very tight at this point as far as the supplies are concerned. And that's our trajectory back right there to make sure we get back quickly enough and with the delta V that we have. Basically, it turns this elongated orbit that we started out in into the normal orbit that you would come back uh, to Earth from if you were around the equator. You can see that we're basically doing an inclination change to 
turn our orbit equatorial and then we uh, go out the way even the Apollo missions would have headed out. So yeah, it basically simplifies the whole thing and it turns out that that was the most efficient thing I could come up with. Uh, so that way we get back quickly. We don't crash into the moon. I had to make sure that that periapsis was not a periapsis that actually crashed into the surface because we're getting pretty close here. But that also ensured that we had enough in the service module after having carried the extra fuel over, mind you. But Orion is supposed to be able to carry potentially a lunar gateway module along with it. And so that's more or less the same thing. All right, so on the way back, now I had uh, done one thing, was uh, which was to replace the Orion heat shield that came with the mod with one of the ones that are already configured by Realism Overhaul to make sure that it wouldn't cause us to blow up. So that's one of the lunarated heat shields that come with Realism Overhaul or modified from stock by Realism Overhaul. But still, the pod threatened to overheat on the way down. And this caused a bit of a problem for me trying to use the descent mode on the pod because I want to mitigate the g-forces on the poor Kerbals, but mitigating the g-forces ended up threatening them with a fiery demise, so I had to reduce that. Here we're coming in heads down, which is to make sure that we capture and don't bounce out. And that's why you go heads down, and you're supposed to turn around to the heads up position in order to make sure that you mitigate the g-forces but I couldn't turn around as quickly as I would have liked there I was adjusting the COM shifter to make sure that the pod didn't overheat and then I have to turn around but the RCS wasn't strong enough for me to turn quickly enough to mitigate the g-forces so they ended up getting more g-force than I was intending so they bore through a lot of that but they're Kerbals, they're very resilient to that sort of thing. And ultimately, we were through the worst of it. So overall, with the mission, it was a matter of quirks of various mods. More than anything else, I already knew that the Delta Vs would work out based on previous testing. Uh, but anyway, here it is. The mission, as we separate the air cap, and for some reason Kerbal follows the air cap, and then pop the parachutes. Everything is successful, and so that is a run through of Blue Origins, uh, Blue Moon, Lunar Landing mission, potentially. I mean, things can change. So with that, as they float down to the surface, I'll say thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below, and I'll see you next time.